rain has subsided for a while and I'll walk through the garden and just show you uh, what's growing. It is around 2 o'clock in the afternoon so you can kind of see the sun exposure of the garden in the afternoon. Right now it has full exposure. Um, right over there in the corner it's starting um, to get some shade so by 3 o'clock that corner bed will be um, completely covered with shade from the tree. So I'm calling this right here my tomato bed because all of the tomatoes over here, knock on wood, are doing wonderfully. They are very healthy and they're getting plenty of air circulation and plenty of sun. So over here is the Cherokee purple. You'll see that's a nice big one there. And there's a couple more on there already. Um, you know, it's setting fruit all over the plant. And this one right here is called a lemon ox heart. So I'm really happy about that one. Look how big it is. And um, I love yellow tomatoes, just love them. So very low acid, really good when you combine it with a couple of other tomatoes like the red and the purple. And then I've got some green right here. This is the green dwarf um, emerald giant is producing quite a few tomatoes there. And then look at the pretty little spider. I do not like spiders. I do not like snakes. <laughs> I have a lot of the spiders in my garden, but not one like this. And this is probably the only kind of garden spider I like. And it'll get really big. You've seen this before, most likely. All right, I have Amish paste um, tomato over there. I need to probably go ahead and pick that one down there at the very bottom. And then um, Swiss chard, calendula, the Thai basil here. This is a sweet Thai basil and first, I think this is the first year I've grown the sweet Thai basil. I usually grow the uh, Siam Queen which has the very large leaves and I, I think I like that better. This one um, is okay but I, I get a lot more flavor out of the bigger leaves and I don't know, I just really like that licorice anise flavor. Alright and then look at the cone flowers, really pretty. They just keep growing and growing, and you can look at all of the insects that it's attracting. All kinds of bugs just flying around. Um, I've been succession planting the jade bush beans. As a matter of fact, I need to go ahead and do another succession planting, and probably my last one, because I'm trying to save room for my fall plantings. I went ahead and started my seeds to yesterday. Um, I started about 72 seeds. And let's see, um, I've got some greasy beans that I uh, planted about one month after my first planting of greasy beans. And so these are climbing up right here. I've already been cooking those. I've been picking them uh, immature, a little bit smaller than you would normally pick them. And I'm cooking them with the pods on. I'm not shelling them or anything. They're wonderful, just really good. Uh, a lot of jade beans over here, jade bush beans. Um, garbanzo beans. They're getting uh, very big, but no beans yet. So that's a, a black variety. That should be interesting. Got borage popping up everywhere in the garden. Um, white swan coneflower. Got all the insects everywhere. Bees, too. All right. Zinnias. La, a good pop of color in the garden. Always like that. And then the Gollingle. Um, lots of new growth. Just popping up everywhere. And this is the first planting of greasy beans that I put in the garden and they are looking really nice. Um, carrots. Carnival blend carrots down here. And those will be ready here very soon. Some of them are actually yellowing. I could probably pick them now. Lots and lots of beans and lots and lots of insect damage. Those Japanese beetles all over the garden, everywhere. I've been collecting those by hand like crazy. Now this is a, a beetle that does like to get out in the sun. I can see these all day long in the sun where my other beetles like the squash beetle um, and the Mexican bean beetle, I typically find those on top of the leaves when it's shady or in the evening or early morning. So I have to collect um, different bugs at different times of the day. So always check your garden different times of the day for bugs. And then this does not look very healthy, but I can tell you right now, this plant has been putting out the cucumbers. I think I, I, this is my son's um, garden right here. This plant right here has 
I know at least produced probably five Chelsea Price cucumbers this week. So really loving that. That's great. Great money saver for me because I buy those cucumbers all the time, all year long. And look at the pretty zinnias. Uh, jade bush beans. Been picking just lots and lots of beans. Been eating a lot of beans. And then this little corn plant here um, has aphids. I've not ever seen aphids on a corn, but um, it made me look closer at it when I saw a ladybug. And if you see a ladybug, go ahead and look for aphids because that's the first sign there might be aphids in your garden unless you have purposely released them. So I saw two on here this morning. And then also what protects the aphids, you know, from the ladybugs getting up here and eating them are ants. So see those ants? Um, they are protecting that, uh, those aphids and they're, and they're, I guess they like to eat the, um, I guess like the sap or whatever, the liquid that the aphids um, get out of the plant. So they work together So when they're, and they keep the ladybugs away from the aphids. So anyway, that's just a FYI. If you see ladybugs and you see ants, look at for your aphids because most likely that's what you have. And... Um, I need to just probably spray them with something. I want to make sure, of course, there's no ladybugs around when I do. Here's a ladybug actually right down here. She's trying to get up there to the aphids, but just really unusual that I'm even seeing aphids. They're all over this little corn. Okay, and then here's the country gentleman corn. I think that one was peaches and cream. So here's country gentleman, and no aphids over here yet. I'm not going to say that there won't be. But I have noticed a ton of bumblebees um, on the tassels. So I saw lots of them yesterday. I'm surprised I don't see any right now. Patty pan squash. I've been, I think I've harvested about five or six off of this one plant so far. And I really like patty pan squash when it's small. So if you're growing it, you want to look for them to be about two or three inches in diameter. And one of mine got about six inches. So I just use it as a little bowl, and I'll include a link to that recipe in case you'd like to check it out. Now, if I looked up underneath these leaves, I could probably find a squash bug. I mean, a squash beetle. I'll include a link to that video if you'd like to check it out. Um, but your uh, squash beetles, like I said earlier, will most likely be underneath your leaves when it's sunny outside. And then my squash, um, butternut squash plant is not doing too well. It has stopped growing. And there's probably some kind of vine borer has gotten down in there or something. I don't know. Um, but at any rate, I do have some butternut squash. So that's good. At least it got produced some fruit before the vine was attacked by something. And then the amaranth. I'm loving growing that. Next year, I'm going to grow a lot more of it. It's just the neatest little plant. The end of that feels like a little bottle brush. It looks like it almost shouldn't even be real. <laughs> in the cilantro, I harvested a lot of the green coriander yesterday, and I popped it in a freezer bag, and it's in my freezer. I'm going to try to use it green. I think that'll be neat. Ooh, it just is, has so much fragrance. It's unbelievable. And then there's some more carrots down in there. Uh, here's some coriander that's turning brown. I'll just pull this out here soon and I'll show you how to do that when I go to um, harvest my coriander. The deal is starting to produce seed, so I'm going to let all the rest of this go to seed for cooking. I'll include a recipe for some wonderful dill bread if you like um, dill bread. And then this little tomato plant's doing pretty good back in here. This one's called an orange minsk. So if all of my tomatoes can produce something, I would love to have a rainbow tomato salad. Wouldn't that be neat? And I'll have Cherokee purple. I'll have lemon ox heart yellow. I'll have orange minsk, an orange one. My Uncle Bart Bagby is like a pinkish color. I've already got one of those. And then of course I have red. I have a lot of red. I have some um, beef steak and, and then the Thessaloniki and the um, Pantano Romanesco over here. And then I have the little cherry tomatoes, the little sunrise bumblebee. None of these look very healthy. They've got blight or something. They're not doing very well. But at any rate, um, we are enjoying watching the little geese at the pond. And I know if you've been watching my tours, you've seen me um, 
videoing them once in a while. And there they are right there. And it's so fun watching them because they're all the little babies are grown up now. They're, you can't really even tell them apart from the adults. But they have not taken flight yet. And it's almost like the parents are um, teaching them how to take flight. They will all of a sudden all at one time um, take off from the pond and then they'll, lay, they'll land back in the pond. So they stay just above the pond about you know five feet and then they go back down. So and then sometimes they'll um, go over to the neighbor's yard and they'll all start running and start flapping their wings like they're trying to take off and then they'll land you know, they only go up about five feet, so it's been fun watching them, and I guess that's what they're doing, teaching them how to take flight. I don't know much about geese, but <laughs> that's what it looks like to me. Anyway, there they are, and I hope you guys are out there having a great time, playing in your gardens, growing lots of yummy things, and have a beautiful day.